Hi, good evening, guys. How are you guys today? I hope you're doing well. This evening, I want to do a topic on Airbnb. We want to um, purchase an Airbnb properties. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, give you an example of how you would break down a property to see wh where you'd need to be to be making a profit. So we're going to be looking at a luxury condo development that is now um, being sold in Reunion. And we want to examine based upon the purchase price, based upon the HOAs and all the other fees that we're going to have to encounter, um, how many nights per month do we have to have this property booked out before we're going to realize a profit? Or how many nights per month does it have to be booked out um, in order for us to cover all of our expenses? Because that's a question I get asked a lot. And I figure since they have this new property over here in... Um, in reunion and it's a luxury property. Here is the um, the website. Um, we I wanted to go ahead and examine if I was to buy this beautiful luxury home or condo. These are condos. Um, what 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 would I what would I be? How many nights would I have to book it? And would it make sense for me to do this? Right. So first, let's look look on um, what they have available here. So this is this is the um, this is what each building would look like. In this building, they have three, four, and five bedroom condo units. The three bedrooms are always on the ground level. I don't know what's going on with my computer today. It doesn't want to work with me. Um, the three bedrooms are always on the ground level, and then we have the four and the five bedrooms. And the four and the five bedrooms are um, two stories with a loft. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is what it looks like. Um, not sure why that's not working. Let's look at the floor plans. Let me see if the floor plans will come up, will work for us. Okay, so this is the three bedroom, right? So here we have a three bedroom and a patio and the patio is huge. The patio is like 654 square feet. So there's three models to choose from. There's a three bedroom, two and a half bath. There's a four bedroom, 3.5 bath with a terrace. The terrace is on the second level, very beautiful. And there's a five bedroom with a terrace, right? These are the, these are the, the way it's set up. On the three bedroom with the patio, the the three bedroom is 1,400 square feet, but, that, but as you could see, the exterior patio is 647 square feet, guys. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? That is like so awesome. So this is the, look how big this patio is. So this is a gorgeous um, community. We have the Jack and Jill bedroom for these two bedrooms and the master has his own um, bedroom over here with a suite. For the four bedroom, three and a half, uh, three and a half baths, we actually have a open uh, loft. This is a living room downstairs and this is upstairs. This is just really beautiful. Let's see if the virtual tour will play, will play for us. I believe the virtual tour are more of a, um, more of a, look at this. So you see this too, this is the living room. You see this up here? This is the loft on the four bedroom. And you kind of lose a little bit of that area um, on the five bedroom because they have the fifth bedroom. This is the four, yeah. They have the fifth bedroom. Um, the fifth bedroom and the, and the additional bathroom takes away a little bit of your loft area. But let's see if we could get to the gallery so you could really see what I'm talking about. Let's see if the gallery, I don't know why it's been so testy today. Perfect. So this is the patio for the three bedroom. The three bedroom would be through this glass. This is a patio area. How gorgeous is this, right? And the three bedroom are on the ground floor, but they have 10 foot ceilings. So these are a three bedroom condo, four bedroom condo. Look at, this is a four bedroom with the living room on the loft up here. Look how beautiful this is. Look at this picture. Just gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, this floor plan is just so amazing, right? So with the four and the five bedrooms, the fifth bedroom take away some of your loft space, but you still have this open air plan here. With the four bedroom, the upstairs is a little bit more open because you don't have that fifth bedroom, right? You have four bedrooms. So this is these gorgeous, they're just being built in reunion. Um, the four bed, the three bedroom starts at 400,000, I believe. And the four and the five bedrooms are in the 500s. I don't like to give prices on the videos because I don't know what point in time you'll be watching it. And I don't want to give you the incorrect information. Now, this is the infinity pool in the clubhouse area, and they have cabanas. 
You also uh, look at look at this. Look at this. This is from the three bedroom. Beautiful patio. Now this is the terrace from the four or the five bedroom because the four to five bedrooms is upstairs and then you go off on the terrace right there. So I mean this is just beautiful and you get to choose uh, what view you'd like. So based and you're still building them. So you could choose between a golf view because it's a golf community. Reunion has three signature golf courses. Um, Jack Nicholson's, Tom Watson, and Arnold Palmer. So it's just gorgeous. This is the patio leading from the third bedroom out. Um, this is what the building looks like. So we have a three, two, we'd have two, three bedrooms on either side. And we have, we'd have a four bedroom here and a five bedroom here. That's just how each building is situated. Um, so you kind of get to choose what you want. They also offer furniture packages. I mean, this is, so, look at this, look at this condo. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, they have furniture packages. So after the sale, you could, you could, um, you could say what furniture package you want. But what I want to talk about more importantly, first, I want to show you the pretty pictures. This is a loft upstairs, by the way. So this is the loft. You see this thing right here. You could look downstairs. This is the big window up here. Um, it's just gorgeous. I do have a video on the, on the floor plan. This is the patio from the second floor. So the four and the five bedrooms will have this kind of patio layout. How gorgeous is that? All right, and you're probably wondering, why is she telling us all this? When is she going to get to the point? So let's say we went and we saw this beautiful, beautiful condo, and we're like, oh, my gosh, we want it, right? How would I make sure that if I was to buy this condo that I'm going to be making a profit, right? So I did a worksheet here for you guys so you could see how you'd go about examining this. Where did my worksheet go? Here we go. So I'm gonna do an analysis. I'm gonna pretend, and, and this one is, I'm, I advertise a mortgage in this one. So in, in this one, we are looking at, let's say we bought a three bedrooms for $455,000. Let's say that the interest rate was at 4%, but this is a pretense. And let's say we did a 30 year mortgage and we did 20% down, right? So our monthly payment came out to 2,176, right? So now let's go to our profit and loss. So this is how we're gonna examine this. So we did three different scenarios. We did a scenario with a three bedroom, two and a half bath, a four bedroom, three and a half bath, and a five bedroom, four and a half bath. These were the prices at the time. Don't pay too much attention to these prices because you know these, these prices fluctuate, but this is the price after we deducted the 20%. So we're gonna pretend that we're buying this with 20% down. Some people might need 30%, we're not sure. So this is this is what our, our loan amount would be. From the loan about with a 30 year mortgage based upon a 4% interest rate, we're gonna say that we're, these are the monthly mortgage payments. So we didn't buy cash, we bought mortgage, 20% down. This is our monthly mortgage payment. This is the monthly HOA. Now, the reason why this HOA is so low is because the builder pays off of pays the HOA for the first 24 months. So if you're buying new right at this minute, the builder is going to pay the HOA for the first 24 months for two years. After that, this is what the HOA will be. It will be 554, right? Also included with this is a $64, um, a $64. So you're wondering if the builder is paying this, where do we, why, why do we have this cost there? Well, in reunion, you have to, you have, to um, have what is called an amen amenity membership. So they have the regular HOA, which would be this, and then they have the amenity HOA. With the amenity HOA, that's normally $450 per month. But the builder is saying, if you were to buy this property and you put it back in their rental program, they will pay off of that amount. So instead of paying $450, you'd be paying $225, right? So the $225 is included in this. Plus, there's an extra fee of $60 something dollars. That fee is for the clubhouse concierge because they actually have a shuttle that would take your guests to and four from the park. So if you buy the condo and you're renting it and you went through the builder's property management company, or you are the preferred, I shouldn't say the builders, the preferred property management company then they are gonna provide a concierge service for your guests. So the guests could call them and ask for extra towels or ask for food to be brought up to them or whatever it is that they want, right? So there's an additional 60 something dollars for that. So that's what this fee is. So this would be your fee 
until two years from now when it kicks up into 554. So 554 would then be added to the 274. And that would be your fee after two years. But let's examine what it is for the first two years. So we bought the condo, we put 20% down, either one of these three ones we bought. This is our mortgage payment. This is what our monthly fee is for the next two years. This is what our taxes would be per year because it's 1.5% of the purchase price. So it breaks down to this monthly, right? So this is part of our monthly fee. This is part of our monthly fee. And this is part of our monthly fee, right? Now there's also a CDD there and the CDD is 188 per month. That's also, that's paid with your taxes. So we brought that out, right? And our monthly gold member dues is included here. Now, let me kind of explain that for a second. So this particular community only, as I said, you have to pay and you have to enter their amenity membership. The amenity membership is $7,500 to enter it, but this builder is paying 50% of it for you. So when you purchase the condo from this particular builder, they're going to pay 50% off the, um, off the, the dues to enter the membership. Right, so instead of paying seventy five hundred, you'd pay thirty seven fifty. So once you once you enter into the membership, then you could choose between gold membership or platinum membership. The difference between gold and platinum is the level of golf that you get to play. So include, included in this membership is the use of using all of the amenities in the community. So that means the water park, the golf course, the tennis court, and all of their exclusive restaurants that they have specific for members only. Right. They also have other restaurants in the in the community, but this is for members only. So the builder is paying off of that due to you for you. So as long as you keep your property in the rental program and you have this property management company managing the property for you, they're going to pay off of that, which is the reason why you only have 274 here. Because the whole amount is 450, but they're paying off, so you only pay 225. And the extra six something dollars, as I mentioned before, is for the concierge service. All right. So then with this, stop playing around. Oh my gosh, this thing is messing with me. Here we go. Okay, so with this, it's telling us, let's go over here. So with this, it's telling us that our total monthly fee, when everything is added, in, excluding the HOA fee that the builder is, that the builder is going to pay for us for 24 months, this is what our monthly payment is going to be. So if we had a three bedroom condo, it would be. This is the monthly payment for that with 20% down now. If you put 30% or more down, then this, these numbers are gonna change, right? So this is what the four bedroom would be, and this is what the monthly payment for the five bedroom would be, right? Now we're gonna assume that this is the nightly rates. This is the average nightly rates taken from the preferred um, property management um, uh, figures. So if you are, if you bought a three bedroom, you'd, you'd get 300 average per night. If you bought a four bedroom, you'd get 400 average per night. And if you bought a five bedroom, you get $500 average per night, right? The property management company charges 25% per booking. So even though you're getting these figures per night, we're gonna subtract out the 25% that the property management company is taking for their fees. So which means when, when they take their 25% out, this is, this is what you have left. So for the three bedroom, you're making 225 a night. For the four bedroom, you're making 300 for per night. And for the five bedroom, you're making 375 per night. Now, what is this you say, Sandy? So these figures here is telling you how much nights you have to be booked to cover this monthly payment, right? And this is, this is the amount of nights you have to book to pay the 25% and to cover this monthly payment. So if you're booking the three bedrooms at least 11 nights, you're going to be breaking even. If you are doing the four bedroom at least 11 nights, you'll be breaking even. And if you're doing the five bedroom at least nine nights, you're going to be breaking even. So that means if you were to have 20 bookings for the, for the month, 11 of that would go to expense and the extra nine would be what your profit would be. Now you, you should have an additional night here to cover electrical and gas because the HOA, the only two things that the, that the HOA does not cover is electricity and gas. So we don't know what electricity and gas is because that's going to fluctuate based upon how often the property is being rented, right? If it doesn't rent for the entire month, you wouldn't have much, um, much uh, electricity or gas. If it rented all of the month, you would have more than if it was to rent 15% 15, 15 of the month, like 15 days, right? So this is your break even point. So if you were to buy a three or a four or a five bedroom, this is how many nights the property would need to be booked per month for you to cover these expenses. And then we're gonna have an additional night to cover our electric and gas, okay? 
Now, what happens when, when the, the extra 554 kicks in, right? So you have two years with this in this uh, package deal here. Two years from now, when the actual the HOA of 554 come in, then your, your monthly payments would, would, would go up. However, if you, if you put your property, if you bought the property, you put it on the market for two years, at this point, it would have built up a lot of reviews. It would, have, it would now be having a lot of repeat guests. So then your revenue should have been increasing over two years because there's no way it should be the same. So you could either buy the property, keep it for two years and sell it before the two years is ended so you don't end up with the HOA fee or keep the property in the rental pool and have it built up. So by the time the two years is over, um, you have enough income and you could cover that extra HOA fee, right? Now, they're always going to be paying off of the amenity membership fee for you. What do you keep the property in? What do you... Um, even when the HOA kicks in, I'm sorry. So this doesn't go away. So as long as you keep the property in the rental program with the preferred property management company, they're gonna pay off of the amenity. So this remains the same. So all we're gonna do is add this to this to get our figure here, right? So instead of 274, we gotta add, we gotta have the 554 to it and that's how we end up with 828. So everything is gonna remain the same. We, we have a fixed mortgage. So we would hope that some of these fees you know, would have paid down in two years, but this is going to be what we're that, what the interest is based on anyway. So your monthly payment would remain the same. What increase would what what would increase is the five hundred and fifty four dollars per month, right? The taxes would remain the same. We're supposing um, the CDD would remain the same here, right? So let's see how that changes. So on the bottom row, on the bottom row, this is what changes. So. The first two years, this is this is what we would need to be booked for to keep to keep to break even. In the in the other after two years has passed and we had this to it, now the numbers jump. So for the three bedroom after two years and I'm, and we have to pay all the full HOAs. Now you'd need to book for fourteen nights at least to break even. And the four bedroom you'd need to book at least thirteen nights. And then the five bedroom you'd have to book at least ten nights. Now isn't it funny that? The five bedroom is the most expensive one, yet it requires the least amount of night to break even. And what this is showing us is that the, 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 the price of the property, even if you're buying a property and you're buying it le for less money, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a greater return, right? Because you're paying, you're paying less of a purchase price. Because in this example, as you could see, the five bedroom is the higher purchase price, less it, yet it, it takes the least amount of um, nights to break even right? Even with both scenarios. And, with, and um, it only needs an additional night down here to break even. And the reason for that is because the nightly cost is more. So when you're purchasing an Airbnb property, what you got to look at is what, what can I get? What nightly rate can I get for this property? Not necessarily how much it is. Of course, how much of this come into play because you have to make sure you can afford to buy it, right? The purchase price is important, but you also have to look into if I'm buying it for more, am I going to be able to charge more in a nightly rate? That's going to be important. And also, if the community is offering more amenities, does that mean I'm going to get a higher nightly rate? And the answer for the, for, for the most part in this area in Central Florida is going to be yes, right? If you're buying around the Disney area and the community offers more amenities, then you'll be able to charge more nightly rate and then it would be more demand, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that the properties that don't have a lot of um, amenities is not going to do well, but the properties with more amenities like a movie theater, infinity pool, clubhouse, tennis court, basketball court, those properties are going to be more because when a family comes, let's say they come on for a week to stay at Disney, they're not, they're, they'll spend like maybe three or four days in the park and then the rest of the time, they're going to want to stay in the resort they're at because they're, they're going to want to enjoy the resort and they're going to want to bring the kids to have different activities. So if the resort is offering a video, a video arcade, a movie theater, a infinity, you know, different pool, a water park, because a lot of these newer um, resorts are offering water park. And in this resort in particular that we're looking at, it does offer a water park as well. But you have to be in the amenity package to get that, right? So I just wanted to do a quick thing on this to show, because I've been, I've been asked this question all the time, um, how do I know where do I break even? The only thing that we're missing from this is what is the average occupancy rate, right? 
And because it's so new, we don't have that because they start building this community like a year and a half ago and then COVID hit and everything kind of slowed down. So now they just, they just started to um, rent it the beginning of this year. So we don't have, we don't have, we have an occupancy rate, but we don't have an occupancy rate for the entire year. Like we can't say it within 12 months, your occupancy rate will be this amount and, um, and have a monthly one, like say February, this is the occupancy rate, March your occupancy rate, because it's going to fluctuate guys, because based upon the holidays, if it's spring, if it's summer, if it's Christmas, if it's Thanksgiving, the occupancy rate for each month will fluctuate. And so you need to know, you need to know what your occupancy rate is. And how does it fluctuate per month? Because you need to be prepared for the months that it's not going to be busy. Maybe, maybe in maybe in January the occupancy rate is maybe twenty nights, right? Or maybe maybe fifteen nights, and then maybe in March the occupancy rate is thirty nights because it's going to fluctuate. So that's going to be really important to know. So if you are looking to buy an Airbnb property, this would be a good example for you to find out. Um, you just get your what all what your monthly cost is, right? What is all the monthly cost? You add all the monthly cost together. You divide it into thirty, and that's going to tell you what your what your expenses per night. Then you find out what is the going rate. What is the nightly rate? What's the average? Is the the average rate is going to fluctuate, but you need to have an average figure. Like, let's say sometime you get a hundred, something you get one fifty, something you get two hundred. So what you got to do is average that out and that would probably put you at about 150 I would use, right? And then you divide the 150 per night, you subtract that from your monthly expenses and then you'll find out how many nights you have to book, right? And that's that's really why it is cuz if I have to make if I have to make 2358 each month to cover my expenses in in this particular situation, what will my nightly rate be? Once I find out my nightly rate, I'm going to multiply that by 30 or 31 or, or 28 days based upon how many days is in that month. And that will tell me what I need to, you know, what I need to have to average it out. Right. So that would tell me, well, if I'm making 225 per night and I need to clear this, how much 225 do I need? <laughs> or how much, how much time do I need to make 225 per night to cover this? I need to make 225 per night in this situation, 11 nights minimum in order for me to cover my expenses. Now, once I cover my expenses, and maybe I'll drop another night in there to cover my electrical and gas, or maybe two nights. So I know for this particular property, I need to rent at least half of the month to be profitable, right? Would you agree with that? Same thing with this. With this, I need to rent at least 12 nights of the month to be to, to cover my expenses, and anything over that would be mine, right? So if you have any... any um questions on this, you could definitely send us an email, give us a call. My number is 407-791-4713. Um, if you want us, if you have a property you're looking to purchase and you want to have a breakdown like this, you want to figure out um, what is it going to take if I was to buy this property? Where do I need to stand to break even? The average nightly rate is going to be important as well as the occupancy rate. We need to know those two things, right? We also need to know what the expenses are. For this example, the only expense outside of the HOA is the electric and gas because the HOA includes Wi-Fi, cable, lawn care, and all those other stuff, right? So the HOA is going to be the biggest ex expense on this property as well as the um, as well as the mortgage. If you're mortgaging, no, most we did a twenty percent scenario in this, but most of the time for most condos, you need to put thirty percent down. Based upon your credit score, you might get away with 20% or based upon the investor or lender that you're using, you might get away with 20%. But for the most part, they prefer if you put uh, if you put 30% down. But the scenario that we just did was based on 20% um, down. So if you see a property that you really like and you fall in love with, the best thing to do is to do a scenario or a synopsis as to what it would cost you and um, what you'd need, what you'd need to break even, right? I hope that was very informative for you. I hope you learned something from that. And if not, just give us a call. Um, we do this all the time for our um, people looking to do any kind of... Now, I want to clear this up too. Short-term rental is Airbnb. Because a lot of time when I say short-term rental, people say to me, I'm not talking about short-term rental, I'm talking about Airbnb. So let, let me clear the air on that. 
anything that's been rented for 30 days or for 30 days or less is considered a short term rental. So Airbnb is a short term rental platform, Verbio, Booking.com, Expedia, because sometimes they rent stuff. All of that is short term rental. It's just that Airbnb has made such a name for itself that people prefer to say Airbnb. It's almost like Xerox, right? Xerox made such a name for itself that people don't say copy this from me, right? Xerox is just a copy machine. But Xerox is not just the only copy machine. There are many different copy machines. But because Xerox, Xerox means such a name for themselves, everybody just says Xerox. This. Same thing with Kleenex. Kleenex is a napkin. And it's not the only napkin. There's many, many companies that make napkins. But Kleenex made such a name for itself that people refer to a tissue as Kleenex. Same thing with Airbnb. People now refer to Airbnb as short term, as, sorry, people now refer to short term rental as Airbnb. And they're not realizing it's the same thing. But whenever you're renting out a property or a house or a hotel or wherever you're renting for 30 days or less, that's a short term, that's a short term rental, right? And properties has to be zoned for short term rental in order for you to do it there. So if you're looking for a property to do, to do Airbnb, the property has got to be zoned for short term rental in order for you to do Airbnb there. I hope that makes sense. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna cut this off now. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you like what we're saying. And if you want to have any other content that you think would be beneficial to you, you could give us a call and we will have it or send us an email. So much ways to get through to us, right? Emails, um, messenger to Facebook, that kind of thing. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And I do hope you have an enjoyable day. Introducing the Knock Home Swap, a new way to buy a house before selling your old one. Here's how it works. First, we get you approved for a new home loan. That way you can start making stronger offers on the houses you love. We'll even lend you the down payment on your new home so you can buy right away without worrying about your equity being tied up in your old house. Once you've bought your new home, we advance you up to six months of mortgage payments on the old house so you never have to pay two mortgages at the same time. Finally, we offer you up to $25,000 in prepaid home prep funds so you can sell your house for top dollar. And with a dedicated support team, we're there every step of the way to make sure your house sells as quickly as possible. We've spent a lot of time improving the real estate experience to give you more certainty, convenience, and cost savings. And we think that makes our home swap the best possible way to buy and sell a home. Find out more from your Knox Certified Agent today.